So let's move on to uh, our next presenter, um, Alexander Pick from the OECD, who leads the Tax Data and Statistical Analysis Unit at the OECD Centre for Tax Policy, and he's responsible for the Revenue Statistics Initiative, um, which through my own involvement via WIDER's um, Government Revenue Dataset Project, I've used very heavily, so it's great to hear from Alexander. Good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to start by thanking everyone, uh, especially the organizers. It is uh, wonderful to be at this event, which has been uh, fascinating up until this point. I really hope that that doesn't change for everyone now. I should also uh, clarify that, as was just said, I am uh, at the OECD, but I work on tax data and statistical analysis, not on the two pillars. So if uh, you're waiting to, uh, <laughs> for any reason, I'll be in the corridor out after the event rather than uh, for this uh, occasion now. Uh, so thank you very much. This is a, an opportunity to talk through the Global Revenue Statistics Initiative. Uh, and I will do so once I figure out the buttons. No, here we are. Uh, my presentation uh, has four sections. First of all, just to explain what the Global Revenue Statistics Initiative is. I would shorten that to GRS each time, but then it'll be a bit confusing with the UNU wider, so I'm going to keep on, and I've uh, asked for your forbearance, keep on referring to it as the Global Revenue Statistics Initiative. Uh, or I might shorten it to RevStats. Uh, then I'm going to talk about the process of uh, data harmonization and the extent to which that relies on dialogue uh, between the OECD, uh, partner countries, and also regional organizations and donors that are involved. And then uh, I think what's perhaps the most uh, important aspect for this uh, uh, session, which is, I think, very well titled, How You Move From uh, Good Quality Data to Domestic Resource Mobilization. And uh, finally, some headline results, which uh, I think uh, not only will I hope show the applicability of this data, but also bring much needed variety to what is otherwise a very text-based presentation. So apologies for that. Uh, so to start with the, uh, the first uh, question, what is the Global Revenue Statistics Initiative? Well, uh, it is a, uh, a means of providing harmonized tax revenue data that is comparative across uh, more than 120, by the end of the year, hopefully 130 countries, all according to a common classification. And I'll come back to why that's important in due course. Uh, each year, we produce four annual publications that show this revenues, uh, this harmonized data for different regions. Uh, this is the African report, and uh, one lucky winner can walk away with one of these. Uh, we also produce reports for Asia and the Pacific, uh, Latin America and the Caribbean, and of course, the OECD, which is where it uh, all began. Uh, it is uh, intended as a key input for tax policy makers and administrators, uh, and also researchers, uh, I should add very much for this audience, uh, that provides information on the, the level of tax revenues, the structure of tax revenues, and indeed for some countries, uh, non-tax revenues, as well as changes in these revenues uh, over time. Uh, as well as that, it is also uh, a tool for capacity development uh, and a platform for communities of practice and regional dialogue, uh, which uh, often, but not always, takes the form of uh, technical workshops. Uh, we are aligned to SDG 17 uh, and the Addis Ababa Action Agenda. And just to return to the SDG 17, I think we contribute in, uh, we try in a variety of ways. Of course, there's the contribution to, to d domestic resource mobilization monitoring. We also would like to think we contribute to the DRM uh, agenda itself and also uh, develop uh, statistical capacity. Uh, the next slide as well, I think, picks up on another SDG 17 point, which is uh, the extent to which we are it is an initiative that is based on partnerships. So for OECD uh, countries alone, obviously, it's, uh, it's a fairly OECD based, but once we are working with developing countries, you see the, the, the quantum of partnerships that are involved and indeed required in producing uh, harmonized revenue data, but also in ensuring that the Revenue Statistics Initiative meets regional demand and meets, meets the demand of countries in that region. And so 
Uh, I hope you don't mind it. I'll take this opportunity to thank uh, uh, NORAD, uh, Peter over there, but also other people who are the uh, donors that contribute to the initiative. As you see, there are a lot of them, and this is, I think, will be uh, explained by the, the intensity of the, the, the production process. Uh, just to draw your attention, for example, so for, for the Africa publication, we work with the African Union Commission, uh, both on the economic development side, but also Stat Afrique, which uh, is uh, two very important role players, uh, as well as the A African Tax Administration Forum, uh, which is an increasingly vocal and important part of the conversation representing African voices in international tax negotiations. So we're, we uh, are not only grateful, but we strongly rely on, on these partnerships. Uh, similarly, for, for Latin America, we work closely with the UN, with the UNCEPAL and other organizations, and Asian Development Bank, but also uh, Pacific Island organizations uh, in, for the Asia Pacific publication. So, uh, the, to return to the, 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 the key issue, the key, uh, I would say, the key sort of value addition of the Global Revenue Statistics Initiative is this ability to harmonize tax revenues at a very granular level over a sustained period of time for all the participating countries. And we're talking about countries, as you'll see, whose tax to GDP ratio ranges from anything from uh, 6% to, uh, to north of 40%. So uh, the key is not necessarily whether a country has a very well-developed tax system. Really, we can uh, work with anyone so long as they're able to provide us with the data uh, at a, starting with a high level, but we can you know, work together to over time. Uh, building on a relationship that evolves uh, and trust that deepens to provide increasingly uh, high quality data. So the, the value of the OECD classification as contained in the interpretive guide, it provides a set of principles to define and classify taxes as well as uh, instruments that are, should not be treated as taxes. Uh, and this ensures consistency across countries. Uh, moreover, the OECD classification is not set in stone. Uh, it is constantly updated. Uh, we work with statisticians across 120 plus countries to understand what are the trends, what are new taxes emerging, and you know, this is not a, a quiet space at the moment. And so this process has been continuing since the 1970s, and each year we update the interpretative guide to make sure it remains relevant to, uh, to the global international tax space. It's also, and this is very important, it's entirely consistent with other well-known sta statistical classifications, such as the System of National Accounts 2008, the European System of Accounts, and the IMF Government Finance Statistics Manual 2014, which in turn means that it is possible to map the uh, OECD classification and the revenues allocated for each of the countries to these other classifications, which we hope is not only uh, helpful for researchers, but actually for the countries themselves, as they are sometimes required to report on various, uh, through different, different uh, processes. Uh, and it, it should be noted that uh, other statistical uh, publications also draw on revenue statistics data from, from time to time. Uh, I think a key point I'd like to make uh, in this presentation is that harmonization is a two-way street, and slightly glibly, I've called it a busy two-way street, uh, perhaps influenced by too much time in Paris. Uh, this is, I think, uh, the, the idea that uh, the OECD sits in Paris, uh, collects data, and then uh, churns it out on its databases couldn't really be further from the truth. For for all of the countries that are covered, there is a strong uh, relationship that has, uh, is constantly renewed on an annual basis because of the annual publication, the annual data submission process requires a, a back and forth. And not only that, but also when countries join the initiative, then it's an extraordinarily uh, intense period of discussions around how to classify such and such a tax. Uh, but also just uh, issues around uh, possible gaps in data, uh, possible issues. Okay, so you can provide uh, central government, but also what about local government? And you know, this, these kind of conversations are not only useful in terms of the, the data that they uh, generate, but actually they allow uh, administrators, our focal points in countries, they, they give, it, give a, 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 a reason, uh, a justification for reaching out to the social security uh, 
fund or to local governments and saying, we have this mandate to provide data to the OECD. Can you actually give us this? Because we haven't seen it before. And this is often the case with customs data as well. And in so doing, it actually has been shown in a number of countries to uh, facilitate their own data sharing across, across government, which is, uh, I think, uh, is a valuable thing in and of itself. Uh, and I think, th the, so this dialogue uh, has two main purposes. The first is to match national tax categories to the OECD classification, but also, as I've said, to uh, obtain complete information on revenues for different categories and different levels of government over time. And we start with the, from the bottom up, which means that you know, we've got the greatest chance of ensuring granularity, uh, and rather than just taking a top-down approach. Uh, as a result of this work we undertaken uh, with the, the partner countries, we are able to produce data that in the end can be uh, is strictly comparable with all the other countries and in turn this forms the basis of key indicators on the level and structure of tax and non-tax revenues, not only across countries but also it allows us to, to generate regional averages and I'll, I'll come to that, uh, back to that in a second. I should just say, so I haven't mentioned it uh, previously, is to join uh, revenue statistics, we need a, a, a buy-in, a sort of a signed uh, response from a Minister of Finance or perhaps a Commissioner General of a Tax Administration, and that mandate in itself is uh, important for, for, for focal points to get the information that they need. Moreover, uh, our regional partners are often extremely helpful, not only in uh, making the required connections, but also validating and uh, double checking the data. And finally, uh, the point that very important to make is that we don't publish any data until a country has had the final opportunity. They validate whatever goes online. So nothing will go up uh, or be published that hasn't got the, the government um, say so, green light. So how does this uh, actually contribute to domestic resource mobilization? Well, I would uh, sort of break this down into uh, two uh, questions. First of all, uh, it's a basis, this high quality and harmonized revenue data are a basis for, for policy analysis. Uh, they allow policymakers to answer fundamental questions to understand the potential for enhancing DRM in their country. So what is the level and structure of tax revenues in my country? How do these compare to other countries? And how have revenues evolved after tax reforms or following shocks, for example? Uh, they, the revenue statistics data can also be used to produce more complex indicators to as assess specific aspects of a country's tax system, such as the effectiveness of its VAT. Uh, we have also developed uh, specific tools and online training that promote, uh, to promote data analysis, and these are all available uh, publicly free of charge, as uh, is all the rest of the information that, that we produce. Each year and for each report, we uh, pr produce special features on priority issues for DRM, often making use of the harmonized data we produce, and often written uh, in coordination with our partners, which, which helps to ensure their relevance and uh, and also the, um, uh, the, 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 the voices of uh, the, our partners are, are, are well heard through the initiative. So, for example, we used uh, revenue statistics in Africa data to analyze the possible impact of uh, the AFCFTA on uh, trade tax revenues or another to harmonize the, qualifi the, the quantification of debt servicing costs as a percentage of total revenue. So these, I think, are important questions that harmonized data you know, allows us to have a conversation on. Equally, for revenue statistics in Latin America and the Caribbean, uh, we looked at tax expenditures uh, this year, so, uh, which I'm glad uh, was uh, timely. But at the same time, it's not just about uh, policy analysis. It's, all about, it's also a platform, cap for cap a tool for capacity development and a platform for knowledge sharing. And I think this is something we are very keen to emphasize. It's an integral part of the, the initiative, not only for capacity development for countries, but also for regional organizations themselves. And we're thinking not only about analytical capacity uh, to use data to inform tax policy at a national or a regional scale, but also statistical capacity for producing uh, comparable and detailed revenue data. Uh, annual data collection, as I said, involves this transfer of knowledge and skills between countries, OECD and partner organizations, and that's sort of an ecosystem whereby these, these, this knowledge can be shared, uh, in, often through these uh, annual technical workshops which 
we uh, are increasingly, as coverage grows, increasingly fundamental for communities of practice around the production and use of high quality revenue data and knowledge sharing on common challenges emerging and emerging issues, as well as successes and failures. Uh, and you know, as I said, because the initiative has expanded, so too have these communities of practice. So uh, that allows me, and I think I have three minutes for some high level results. Perfect. Uh, so this is uh, slightly old data, but we don't have a complete set of data for 2021. And I should say that we have a, the intensity of the data gathering process means that we do have a bit of a lag in our data. So by the time we publish this report for 2023, this will mean that we have a complete set of data for 2021, which isn't necessarily ideal for that immediate policy response, but at the same time, we've looked into getting it quicker, and it's, you know, given the capacity constraints, it's not always possible. So there's a trade-off there. In any case, for 2020, this is, as you all know, the, the year of the, uh, the COVID shock, and we see the range of uh, um, tax to GDP ratios on, across the different regions. Uh, I think this is fairly explanatory, uh, but it's a nice wheel. Uh, and then we also see, and this is a, it, on one hand a staggeringly boring slide, but we've heard a lot about how uh, tax revenue stagnated uh, across 2020, and here you are. I mean, it's beautifully just very straight lines with a bit of a dip in 2020. Uh, but this is making use of, you know, extremely to get that very boring graph. There are millions of data points to go in there. So, you know, it's, it's nice that it can be simplified to this level. Uh, and th in the, this year's publications, we, see, we will see how uh, Latin America ticked back up. Africa actually probably is going to flatline and, and OECD uh, somehow kept going up a bit. Uh, Asia Pacific, because we only have an average going back to 2018, we haven't shown the longer time frame, but we could include that as well. And uh, we will do in the, in the future. And finally, this... Uh, is a, a nice slide uh, because it shows the importance of different tax types in different regions. So again, the, the tax mix is hugely important for tax policy makers. The headline message here, because I don't have much time, is look at the OECD average, look how different it, its tax structure is with a much greater role played by direct taxes, income tax, social, uh, social security contributions, than in developing countries where taxes on goods and services are much more prominent. Interesting also that the Africa average and the Asia Pacific average are very similar, uh, whereas the LAC average is slightly different because social security contributions are more important, PIT levels are uh, very low. Uh, so this are some links which, you know, I don't, is it worth putting these up? I never know. I mean, if you can find this slide later, you will be able to click on these links. For now, I think this is almost entirely uh, unhelpful, but it does remind you of my name. And, uh, and that's me. And this is just uh, a nice picture because in uh, May of this year, we were able to have our Revenue Statistics in Africa workshop in person for the first time uh, since pre-COVID. And I tell you, it's, um, it's a wonderful experience to be able to bring, uh, well, uh, tax policy makers and statisticians from 30 different uh, countries into the same place to hear about their experiences, to learn, and it's always a, a wonderful experience. I think that sort of epitomizes the, the value addition of uh, global revenue statistics. Thank you very much for my time. I'm sorry for talking so quickly.